cows. So cows, they're searching, they could not find. The Sokas went to for searching, he said, Lord, don't worry, I will go. As soon as Krishna went for searching, in the meantime, Brahmaji came and kidnapped all cowherd boys and kept them in the cave of near close to Jamuna. And in that same day, it was constellation day of the birth constellation of Balaramji. So at the very day, Balaram was not present during cow grazing. So Brahma get very golden chance. So now Brahma ji went to Brahmalo. In the meantime, he was still showing Bhagavan, he can do what is possible, what is not possible, what never is possible. He can make it possible very easily. So Brahma ji, after capturing them, he went to Brahmalo, means his own abode. In the meantime, Krishna, he made a trace and he went Brahmalo prior to Brahmaji and became four-headed Brahmaji and took his seat inside his Brahma's abode and told his servants, calling their name, oh, you have to do this or do that and told, listen, I have a new message from reliable source that someone is coming to cheat me, making artificial forehead. Be careful, don't allow him to enter in my abode. When Krishna is playing this drama, how can I, who can understand? So, when Brahmaji came, he wanted to enter his house. Suppose you are entering his own, your own house. If you are very wealthy person, if you are so many servants, they will make you danda, pranam, salute you. Oh sir, please come, come. You have not, no need to ask any permission from your servants. As by Brahmaji going every day, coming and going, is going in. As soon as you want to go in, two servant can turn and shut inside. <laughs> what? Are you mad? No, no, the servant said, no, we are not mad, you are mad. You are teacher. Our master is inside, our master order us that somebody is coming to cheat our master. So, how come? I am your master. Don't talk anymore. If you advance an inch, crack your head. Why are you surprised? Why they are doing so? That Brahma came step back and meditated. Oh my goodness. Oh, Krishna is himself there became Brahmaji. What to do? Now it is big offense. So he came back in, again in home of Vrindavan. And he saw that Krishna is raising cows as it is. And Sokas are there and everything. How come? When Brahmaji kidnapped the cows and cows and cowherd boys, then Krishna is searching all Sokas would not find. He has yogurt and rice in one hand and between the finger some kind of pickle called teti in broth is keeping on his between hand and was taking. But he forgot to take, became so unhappy. Then Jogmaya helped him to remind, remind him, Oh, Brahmaji did this. Okay, no problem. So Krishna became himself, all sakhas and all cows. And going every day for grazing cows and everything doing as, as it is. So Prajavasis could not understand. The cows, they could not understand. No one can understand what is going to be happen. In the meantime, Gargacharya announces, this is the golden year, and this time is very extremely auspicious. So whoever married their daughter, they never be widowed, they are extremely fortunate. So all Brajavasis, they arrange their marriage ceremony with their son and daughter. So at that time, also Krishna became also khas. So all gopis, they got married with Krishna. But none can understand. This is the play of the drama of Jogamaya Devi. When Brahmaji came down in home of Vrindavan, he saw all are going same time congressing. Brahmaji said, maybe, when I looking towards this, this side, this is bringing them from Jamuna side, from the cave, and grazing cows. When I look at the other side, then he was sending them. Oh, what Balram thought? So, what happened? 
for a much of oh let me see i have four headed by two headed i can look towards krishna sky and by two headed towards jana ke then and so sometimes we saw both of krishna sokhas and kausas like unconscious there like sleeping there and cow grazing is going there then paralysis am i in dream what is happened then when he opened his eyes he saw all cows all calves sorry all calves and all covered boys even their steep all became four hundred how come how did you four hundred again the rabbi again the rabbi says he also cow is going on why is not so this this no want to show brahma ji that even the stick of bronze by which we are cow grazing they are not an ordinary they are transcendental sachidananda and they are also simply deity four hundred four hundred Vishnu doctor want to show this then brahma did pranam full prostration in the meantime just is going to be one year the cows they are nature they love their small kids not the elder 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 cows so the elderly cow the milk man they are grazing cows one place and krishna only sokhas the grazing cows other side so the cows saw from a distance that the elder cow our elder cow the grazing far distance seeing them they run towards that side giving them new cow and all goats they become extremely unhappy become very angry how our children play brute we could not control our cows let us go there will give a good lesson they also follows the cows and when they went that side near madhuban see their own kids they forget that danger they became completely cool down why because all the coward boys are krishna then bolade prabhu just one day one year one day left over there he saw how come the nature of mother cow they will love their young kids young cow not the elder cow giving up their young cow Why they run there? How? What happened? Is this Maya or Brahma ji or any ghost? Anything? None can be able to learn me. Then my eyes saw oh, Krishna became calves, kid, and coward boys. Everything. Then all the people began smiling towards Krishna. Oh, only by the best milk of Mother Jasoda, your stomach not became full. Oh. he became millions of calves and millions of coward boys and sucking their breast milk the brother to smile at this was my up to one year brother they could not figure out by the influence of this was jog maya only krishna's jog maya can be able to follow the prabhu other than no power has no power to be able to follow the prabhu then brahma ji saw this oh now i did big offerings how to do how i can satisfy krishna so then is thought thought oh if i praise krishna other way he may not be pleased so if you want to please bhagavan if you have to please krishna you have to please his associates if you want to please gurudev you have to please devotees please krishna boss then gurudev will please and if you please krishna you have to please associates So if I serve Guru Dev, don't care for Krishna boss, Guru Dev will never be happy. If I serve only Krishna, but not his associates, then Krishna will never be happy. So Brahma he thought, oh, I have to pray to Rajabasis, then Krishna will please. First he told, Atha bhite deva padam puja daya prasadale sanudrita eva hi. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> First, pray to the Brajabas. Is then Guru Dev will please also. So then Brahma is told, No meat that they have to cook. Say, Tari Dambaraaya, Dunya Patan Sa Paripit Challa San Mukhaaya, Vanna Swaye Ka Bala Dakhle Bishano Venu, Lakshma Sri Mridu Padee Pusupan Do Jaya. In this slok, he prays Nanda Baba and others. So after that, Guru Dev, to whom you order, they will and pray to Krishna and explain. Pray to Vasishtha. Hare Krishna. Panchal. 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 Panchal.
Shri Krishna Lila Katane Sudaksham Audaurya Madhurya Gunaishtra Yuktam Varam Varenyam Purusham Mahantam Narayanam Tam Shirishanama So Srila Gurudev is bringing us on a wonderful transcendental journey into Sri Krishna's transcendental pastimes and as his pranam mantra is telling to all of us Shri Krishna Lila Katane Sudaksham Srila Gurudev is so expert in anointing this nectar into the souls of all the jivas in this world bringing the pastimes of Krishna bringing Vrindavan into our hearts so how fortunate we are this evening to be in the presence of Srila Gurudev hearing ten candles So this wonderful pastime of Lord Brahma stealing the calves and the young cowherd boys and then uh, having this astonishing realization that actually Krishna himself had overpowered his, his yoga potency, his mystic yoga and he realized that he was absolutely nothing even though he's the supreme uh, creator of this universe but his power in comparison to the unlimited power of Krishna he was like a tiny little firefly in comparison with the effulgent sun so Lord Brahma after witnessing this uh, pastime of Krishna and realizing that he had been thoroughly defeated by his very own master so now Lord Brahma he felt very very embarrassed and very foolish and he wanted to come to approach Krishna, to give his obeisances to Krishna, to ask for forgiveness from him, that he had become bewildered, uh, because this Leela is called Brahma Vimohan Leela, that Lord Brahma has become bewildered. But actually this bewilderment, it was Krishna's will, it was Krishna's desire to execute such a pastime. So Lord Brahma, uh, by Yogamaya potency, he became temporarily bewildered, thinking that, oh, who is this young cowherd boy? Who, how could he possibly be the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead? But when he saw this manifestation of Krishna's power and potency, then he realized, oh yes, I have made a big mistake. He is the Absolute Lord, not only of this universe, but of millions and trillions of universes, and the unlimited spiritual sky, the entire creation. But yet, he, has, he is appearing here in Vrindavan, in this Naravat Lila, very human-like pastimes. And he is appearing here, uh, executing these sweet pastimes for the benediction of all the fallen souls. So now Lord Brahma, he approached Krishna one day, just after this pastime. And he came to Krishna in a very secluded place in the Vrindavan forest. And there uh, he saw that Krishna was standing with a lump of sweet, uh, like a laktu in his hand. It was like an innocent young boy. And Lord Brahma came down on his swan carrier, the great four-headed Lord Brahma with golden crowns and great opulence. And he came down there in this secluded place in the forest, 
And then he paid his obeisances to Krishna, who was just simply standing there like an innocent young boy. And he, from all sides, he circumambulated Krishna and with tears in his eyes, all of his foreheads, anointing the lotus feet of Krishna. And now he stood up very reverentially in front of Krishna, bowing down before him. And he began to pray his prayers to Krishna. These prayers are very glorious because within them there is so much uh, tattva siddhanta, so much uh, realized knowledge that Lord Brahma had gained. And he glorified Krishna as being the absolute Lord of the whole creation, whom everyone must take shelter of. And he said, Samashita ye patapallavam plavam mahatpadam punya yasho marare. He said that this great vast universe, which is actually an, like an unlimited ocean, and it's very, very difficult to cross over. This material existence is for so many dangers and so many problems. And the Jiva souls are floating in this material universe lifetime after lifetime. At every single step, there is so much difficulty and danger. But if someone takes shelter of your lotus feet, O Krishna, then that great ocean, it becomes shrunk down to the size of a, just like a little puddle made by the hoof of a calf in the mud. That's all. And anyone can easily cross beyond it by the power, by the potency of taking shelter of your lotus feet. And he prayed to Lord Brahma, he said, You are the absolute supreme Lord, and your powers, your glories are unlimited. No one can possibly understand you and your potencies. And therefore he said, Jnane prayasam utapasya namanta eva jivanti sammukaritam bhavadiya vartam stane stita shuligatam tanuvan manobir ye prayaso jita jitopya sitaistri lokyam. He said, those persons who give up this attempt, Jnane prayasam, to, to, to understand you by simply philosophical knowledge, to comprehend the extent of your glories, this is impossible anyway. So therefore, they should give up this attempt. And jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiya vartam. They should live in the association of your pure devotees who have realized your eternal transcendental glories in nature. And they should constantly hear san mukaritam from the lotus mouth of such pure devotees. They should hear this nectar, this stream of nectar flowing from their lotus mouth. Stane stita. They should remain, whatever position they are in, in this present world, they can remain there, but always be hearing from the pure devotees. And in this way, they will gradually become so transcendentally uh, potent in their love for you. They will develop praying bhakti. They will develop pure bhakti by this process. And then, ye praya so jita jitop yasi taistri lokyam. You, my Lord, O Krishna, who cannot be conquered by anyone in the whole three worlds, in the whole creation, you become jita, you become conquered by that person's brain. Lord Brahma, he glorified Krishna with so many stavas and studies. And at the end of his glorification, he also prayed that, oh, these bridge basis, these eternal associates of yours, every living creature within Vrindavan, even the plants and the trees and the shrubs, even the rocks, they are so, so fortunate. Because these bridge basis are your eternal associates millions and millions of times greater than myself. So what am I in comparison? I simply pray that I can take birth as a shrub or a tree, uh, that I can have the dust from the lotus feet of these uh, bridge bossies on me. And even if I cannot take birth like that, I pray even I can become a stone, a rock, that the sweepers in the Vrindavan, these sweepers, they will even cleaning the bathrooms and going here and there. Oh, when they come, they use one stone to scrape their feet on, to clean their, their feet. So I want to become that stone. Lord Brahma desired to become a stone. And actually, by his, his desire became fulfilled because then he became Brahma Parvat. 
in Namdagaon, and, uh, and on that very hill, Lord Krishna performed all of his pastimes. Not Namdagaon, Varshana. Sorry, Varshana. Yes, in Varshana. And there are so many sweet pastimes of Radha and Krishna were performed on Lord Brahmaji himself. So finally, he told that I cannot understand the greatness of all of these uh, associates of yours. He said, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Vrajokasham, Yan Mitram Paramanandam, Purna Brahma Sanatanam. Oh, that supreme, absolute Purna Brahma, who is the eternal, absolute truth beyond this whole creation. He is there playing as the intimate friend of the cowherd boys, the intimate beloved of the gopis, the son of Nanda Maharaj, and all of the bridge basis have such intimate relationships. So he said, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, how fortunate, how fortunate they are. And in this way, Lord Brahma fell at the lotus feet of Krishna, weeping so many tears and glorifying Krishna. And Krishna stood there, uh, hearing these stavas and stutis of Lord Brahma, practically unmoved, because He is that Supreme Lord, who millions and millions of Brahmas are glorifying. So in this way, Lord Brahma understood the glories of His uh, worshipable Lordship, Sri Krishna, and He surrendered at His lotus feet, and Krishna also forgave Him for the mistake that He had made. So this is the glorious position of Lord Brahma. Actually, he is our Adi Guru in our Samhradaya. All of this knowledge is coming down through Lord Brahma. But because of his great love for Krishna, uh, he becomes an instrument for Krishna to perform his pastimes. So in this way, Krishna's Braj Lila is going on. He was praying so many things. Janante eo janantu. Name bhagva muna. Vaso to baipam gojara. Oh, anyone can tell that I know the endless glory of Krishna. But they are not true. Even myself, I don't know. And then, he again doing pranam, and then he was going. Krishna having a lot of flower in his hand, and he was doing like that, and he was keeping his hands on the head, on the soldier of his shakha, and legnected Brahma. All the boys were like, oh, Chauma, Chauma, Chauma. Chauma means four-headed, four-headed. <laughs> Brahma, to our Guru. But he had done something wrong. He thought that I should have stole away the friends of Krishna and cows. And then I will see why it, uh, what he is doing. So another sweet past time I will see. But if he waited for some more time to see sweet past times of Krishna, automatically Krishna would have done. But he thought that I will do. But Yoga Maya of Krishna, oh, he came in his head mind and Yog Maya did everything what uh, or Madhu Maharaj took. All gopis were married to Sakha, that is Sakha was himself Krishna and answer he will give that they had. So after that Krishna uh, and all day, one day, they were near Mathura border and Bindavan border. They are only 
a soap tree, no fruit, no flowers. But they were hungry. Their mother has sent their eh, prasadam to other side where Krishna was to go. But Krishna suddenly came this. And he was very hungry. Then what became? Kyanti Mirandhasya Gyanam Jana Shlakaya Chakshuran Maritam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Maam Vishnu Pada Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Samini Kitamane Maam Vishnu Pada Radhika Priyatmane Shri Shima Bhakti Vedanta Narayani Kitamane Vansha Kalpata Vipyascha Kripasin Vipyavacha Ujitanam Thavne Pyo, Vaishnu Vipyo Namo Namaha. So Srila Gurudev has kindly instructed me to relate the pastime with Denakasura. So one day Krishna and Baladev with the cowherd boys, they were in the forest, Gurudev was related. So the cowherd boys came to Krishna and Baladev, they said, big demon is, attra is attacking us. Hunger. We're very hungry. So we want you to kill this demon. So at that time, <clears throat> they were close to a very uh, fragrant forest of tal fruit. Tal is like palm tree, and it has very fragrant, very tasty fruits. And they could smell the tal fruit. So they told the Krishna Baladev, you should get tal fruit for us. So Krishna and Baladev, they went into the forest, and then Baladev, his little boy, looks like, little boy. But he began shaking these huge, tall palm trees. And the, talf, the palm trees were waving backwards and forwards, and the ripe fruit were dropping down, put, 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 on the ground. So, in that forest, there was a big demon called Devakasra, in the form of an ass. So that forest, that tal forest, it belonged to Kansa. And Devakasra and his ass friends they were guarding on behalf of Kansa to make sure that nobody else tasted these very nice tal fruit. So, then as <clears throat> he represents ignorance. He doesn't just represent ignorance, he's personification of ignorance. Like in the West, for example, we know that, I've never seen, but they say, that if you have a carrot in front of a donkey, in front of an ass, so the, the ass will walk all day trying to get the carrot. And he's thinking, I'm coming closer, I'm coming closer, I'm coming closer, but he never actually gets the carrot. Just like a conditioned soul in the material world, he's chasing sense gratification. He's thinking, I'm coming closer, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy. He never enjoys. Mm. In the mountains, <clears throat> they use asses to carry heavy burdens. So there was one group of asses, when they came in the evening to the uh, sheltering place, they found, oh, we left the ropes behind. So if we don't tie up the asses, then they'll all run away. One of them said, no, no, don't worry. If you just pretend to tie up the asses, they're so stupid, they won't run. <laughs> so the leader said, okay, well, we'll try. What else can we do? So they pretended to tie up the asses, and sure enough, the asses just stood there like... This morning, they wanted to move, so they started beating and kicking the asses. They wouldn't move. But what to do? What, what, what have you done now? He said, listen you got to pretend to untie them. <laughs> so they pretended to untie the asses and they moved up. The ass is so stupid. In India they say that in the summer there's very little grass. So the ass is eating, eating all day. So much walking here and there, eating. And then he looks behind and he sees there's almost no grass. He thinks, oh, I, I haven't eaten anything. Oh, I've eaten so much. <laughs> Because all the grass is gone, so he thinks, I've eaten so much, he becomes fat. Just thinking about all the grass that he hasn't eaten, he becomes fat. And then in the, in the rainy season, so the rains come and there's so much grass, and he's eating, 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 eating. And he looks around, he says, I haven't eaten anything at all. And then he becomes thin, very lean and thin, because he thinks he hasn't eaten any grass. So, ass is a very stupid animal. So Den Kasra came out of the forest 
He was very, very angry. And he began to kick on Krishna and Baladev. So asses, when they kick, they turn around and they give a, a good belt with the back, with the back hooves. But one thing that as uh, in Bhagavatam is described, how they ask, first of all, they sing very beautiful poetry. They're quite intoxicated by the beauty of their own voices. And then, when they chase a female ass, I've seen a film actually, the female asses are running like mad, and the male asses are running like mad after the females, and kicking their faces like anything. So, Dana Gasser came round, and he gave a big kick with his hind feet on Baladev. And Baladev simply caught hold of his feet, whirled him around. And just by whirling, he lost his life airs. And Baladev threw him into the top of the big, tall tree. And the tree fell over on the next tree. And then that fell over, just like a, a line of dominoes going down. So, Baladev, he's the... Uh, he's Adi Guru. Akanda Guru Tattva. So, Guru destroys ignorance. If we surrender to Guru, then he will destroy ignorance. So, Baladev, he was destroying Denukasa. Then, Denukasa had so many ass friends, and they all came running out. And one after another, they were attacking Krishna and Baladev, and Krishna and Baladev were throwing them one after another, one after another. They were throwing him into the trees, and more and more of the trees were falling down. And the asses also, they were all different colors. Green, blue, red, all sorts. So it's a very amazing rainbow scene. And then there was red blood everywhere. So in this way, uh, Krishna and Baladev, <coughs> they, uh, they killed Denukasa, the ass demon, who represents complete ignorance. And similarly, if we surrender to Gurudev, so Gurudev will uproot the ignorance in our hearts, and he'll replace with transcendental knowledge of Krishna's glories and his pastimes. Hare Krishna. Hentasu is donkey. Donkeys are foolish. They are bitten by the hind legs of sea donkeys. And even they fall. In the same way, those who are foolish, they don't serve Krishna. They are like donkeys, bitten by the hind legs of their wives and others. So, we should be, we should always try to serve Krishna and to serve Gurudev. Otherwise, all we are like donkey and foolish who will not hear and obey Gurudev and serve. In this way, he was doing so many sweet pastimes. After that, <coughs> Jamna was, Jamna's water was mixed with poison. Kali from Ramanakhli has come there because he knew that Varun cannot go there by the cause of Rishi. So he was taking shelter there and by his very dangerous poison, whole water was burning and any part going from there, they used to burn there. Only one tree was there, the Kadamba tree, because on this tree, Garuda had taken the nectar in a jaw there and some it may be dropped there, so it was only there. So, one day, the cows and Krishna friends were very thirsty. So, they came, and when they came nearer, oh, they died. Oh, Krishna then thought, I should do something. And that is why he came and telling boy that you should wait here. I am coming very soon. And then he climbed on the tree and took his pitambar on the red west and jumped. 
and at that time Kali became very angry and he attacked on Krishna. He folded Krishna and Krishna became lifeless. At that time, from Braja, Nanda Baba, Jasoda and all other Rani. At that time also Baldev was not there. So he also ran away. And Singh saw that, oh, Mother Jasoda, Nanda Baba, oh, they are going in, uh, entered in that war. So he said, and after some time, Krishna came out of his oil and came on the hay and on his horse began to dance like Shankar and blood coming from there and then his wives began to pray and thus Krishna told that you should go to Ramda, don't be here and then he went here. He told that Garud will make problem for me. Oh, now, now my in our roads, my footprint is there. So he After that, Pralamba Surbhas and then Dhamanav, Krishna took fire and set the cows and his friends. So many. After that, in Saratka, autumn season. Everywhere water, in Jamuna, in ponds, in Sarovas, in Paman Sarovar, in Krishna Kunda, in Manas Ganga and Kusan Sarovar. Oh, very clear. Very clear. And very cool breeze now coming. And Krishna in this way, with Baladev Prabhu and other boys, he went to forest. Kusamitapa Narada Sushmi Bringa Yudhikala Bhusta Sarasaran Mahidram Madhupata Avagyasi Charyanga Sampalspal Balajas Balaj Sukhuj Krishna in this Forest of Vrindavan, everywhere, Heli, Chaveli, Dui and Kadampa, Pavas Madhya. Peace were, what? Hum? Humming. And Kaku was singing, bow, peacocks, dancing, everywhere. In this way, Krishna began to go from one forest to another. And all Sakhas were praising Krishna and they all began to play on their flows and thus they were entered. And gopis, all the gopis, in their houses, in their sakhi meeting, in groups, and they are hearing as if fruit is there. And this very beautiful area. And then began to sing the glories of those who were there. Baraha Piyudam Natvarabhu. Now, you should tell me, can you be in brief? <laughs>